SwiftUI gives us lots of gestures for working with views. Easy the most common is our friend on tap gesture, but there are lots of others available as well, as well as interesting ways of combining them together to get different results. Now I'm gonna skip past the simple on tap gesture here, so we've covered that several times previously. But before we go on to bigger things, I do wanna mention you can pass a count parameter to handle double tap, triple tap, and even more if you want to. For example, we could say here, our basic hello world text has an on tap gesture attached with a count of two. So only run when pressed twice. So we can now print double tapped, for example. Okay, that's old on tap gesture. That's basically all there is to it. Let's look at something more complex. We can do a look at instead an on long press gesture like this. On long press gesture, print long pressed. And now you'll have to press down your finger and hold it for a certain number of seconds before triggering the long pressed print message. So here we have hello world. And when I press and hold, now, boom, long pressed appears. So there's a slight delay here. Now long press gestures are also customizable. For example, you can specify a minimum duration for the press. So your action closure only triggers when you hold down for a certain number of seconds you've specified. For example, we might say on long press gesture, minimum duration is two seconds. So now it'll wait two seconds before triggering the long pressed print message. You can even add a second closure that triggers whenever the state of the gesture has changed. Now this will give a single Boolean as a parameter and it'll work a bit like this. As soon as you press down, you start pressing immediately, the change closure will be called and its parameter will be set to true. I am currently active. I'm working right now. If you release before the gesture is triggered, i.e. in our case before this print message is called, then it'll be called again. The change closure will be called again saying, it's now false, I am no longer tracking a press. But if you hold down for the full length of your minimum duration, then it will call the change closure with false, because it stopped the gesture being in flight, but it'll also call this completion closure. It'll do both of them at the same time. So we might say, I want to have a one second long press gesture that prints long press when one second's passed, but also an on pressing change closure, which takes an in progress Boolean. Am I currently tracking a gesture or not? Uh, like that. And for our code, we'll do print in progress is equal to in progress, like that. So I'll press command R now, and we should see the full lifecycle being printed out in this corner. So I press and hold, boom. So you can see it was true, then it was false, and then long press was called straight away. For more advanced gestures, you wanna use a special modifier just called gesture. And this works with one of the dedicated uh, gesture structs. We have drag gesture, we have long press gesture, we have magnification gesture, and we have rotation gesture, plus tap gesture for the simple gestures like that. These all have special modifiers attached to them, we can say uh, on ended, for example, when it's triggered the gesture, on change, for example, when it's modifying the gesture in flight. And of course, you can uh, use these in combinations to get different kinds of behaviors. For example, you might say on changed here or on ended there or both together, it's down to you. As an example, we can attach a magnification gesture to a view so that pinching on the view in or out scales the view up or down, so it's bigger or smaller. And this will be done making two at state properties to store the scale amount uh, at how far we've gone, how far our final value is, then attaching that with a scale effect to our view. So we'll say we have at state private var current amount is 0.0. And then at state private var final amount is 1.0. So we're saying right now, we're scaled at 1.0, our regular 100% size of our text view here. But over time, current amount will be increased because they'll pinch in a thing and it'll adjust that to be bigger and bigger and bigger. And we'll add that to our final amount to scale up the text larger and larger. So we have our text uh, view here with some padding around it. Let's just scrap the padding, it's not important here. I'll say scale amount here, scale amount, scale effect, sorry, there we go. His final amount, there we go plus current amount, like that. So I get bigger and bigger and bigger over time. Then attach our gesture, like this, 
And inside there, we'll say I want a magnification gesture, like that. Now by itself, it'll do nothing at all. We're gonna attach an unchanged closure to it. And it'll tell us what the new amount is, how much they've pinched up from here. Now I'm gonna say our current amount equals amount minus one. So I'll subtract our starting amount from there, which is one, and put that into current amount. Then on ended, we give another amount in, which we can basically ignore at this point because we're storing current amount as well. We'll do final amount plus equals current amount and put current amount back to zero again. So we're modifying our total scale amount by however much I've scaled up so far and then clearing that scale amount. So we can scale, release, scale some more, release, scale even more, release again and again and again as you'd expect rather than sort of snapping back to zero every single time. Press Command R now. As you can see on the simulator here, so it's a rather hard to scale, you've got to hold down uh, the Option key on your keyboard to get sort of a two-finger gesture like this. And I can just grab this thing and pull it up and release, but then go even further. We track the final amount, our total scale amount for all possible scales, whereas current amount is the current scale amount for the current pinch gesture. I can bring it right down again, it's, I tell you, much easier to do on a real device, uh, but I'm sort of getting there slowly with the simulator. There we go, coming down slowly. Anyway, so you can scale up and down with the uh, option button on your keyboard. Anyway, a very similar approach can be taken with rotation gesture, except rather than saying scale effect, we'll say rotation effect. So we have current amount like before and file amount like before, but now we want angles. So I'll say our current amount is angle dot zero, so there's no rotation. And our final amount starts off at angle dot zero as well. Then inside our body, we'll say we want a rotation effect of the angles. So that'll be current amount plus final amount. And for our gesture, we'll say there's a rotation gesture. Now this thing will be given angles. So we'll have angle in here and angle in here, no longer simple amounts. And then for our uh, on changed, all we'll do is put that angle into current angle. Just stash away how much they've pushed it by each time. And then we release here, we'll do final amount is uh, plus the current amount, but set current amount back to dot zero, as opposed to the number zero, which doesn't make sense. Um, but here, dot zero works fine. And with that in place, we can now have rotation. Now again, you gotta be careful in the simulator, it's a bit hard to do, You've got to sort of hold down the option key, grab the thing, and then pull it round like that. But you can see I can spin it and release, then spin it some more and release. So that's why we have the two values being stored. The final amount stores the sum of all our rotations, and current amount is just the current rotation like that. So we can spin things around with gestures really, really nicely. Now where things start to get interesting is when gestures start to clash, when you have two or more gestures that might be recognized at the same time. For example, you have uh, one gesture and a child view and one in the parent view, the same gesture, what will happen? For example, we could say, let's clear up some of this code here. We could say that uh, our little text view is actually inside a VStack, like that. And I'll say when the text view is tapped, we'll have an on tap gesture here, which says print text tapped. But the VSAC around the text view will also have an on tap gesture, which will print VSTAC tapped. So we're saying the same gesture can belong to the child view and to the parent view. The question is, what will SwiftUI do? As you'll see, in this situation, SwiftUI will always give the child's gesture priority. That's the first one that was hit, the child's gesture, which means we'll always have text tapped here. If you want that to change, if you want the V stack to have priority, you can use another modifier, which is called a high priority gesture. And this thing can be given a new gesture to work with. So I'll say in here, we have, I'll put it on my clipboard perhaps for now, a high priority gesture on the V stack with a tap gesture inside that when we have on ended, we'll just call here, with trading close syntax, we'll just call Print VStack chart tapped. So we're saying our VStack now has a higher 
priority gesture than the default attached to here. And I'm missing a uh, parens there. That's better. Um, the VStack has a, t a higher priority gesture attached to it. When that ends, call VStack tapped like that. And now when I press the same, same text we had before, it'll print VStack tapped rather than text tapped. So if UI prefers the VStack one here, Alternatively, you can use a simultaneous gesture. You can say that this whole tap thing here, unchanged, but the modifier it's placed inside is now a simultaneous gesture, like that. So I want this thing to recognize alongside the child gesture, so they'll both trigger at the same time. So I'll run it again, and I'll tap on Hello World, and boom, you see VStack tapped, and text tapped at the same time. So they're working together simultaneously rather than one overriding the other one. Finally, SwiftUI lets us create uh, gesture sequences where one gesture will only become active if another gesture has first succeeded. So A has to happen, then B will happen. This takes a little bit more thinking because you've got to make them reference each other, do A when B's finished, um, so you can't just attach them directly to a view, it takes a bit more work. So for example, we might say, um, we want to do a bit of uh, dragging in our view. We want to drag a circle around on the view, but only if you long press in it first. If you long press, sort of select it, and then drag it around. So first we'll make some state to track how far the circle's been dragged. I'll say, at state, private var, offset is cg size dot zero. Then we'll make a property to track whether the circle's being dragged right now or not. At state private var is dragging is false. Next up, inside our body here, we're gonna make a gesture that modifies those properties as they're moved around, right inside body. So I'll say, let drag gesture be a drag gesture here. When it's changed, so when I've moved slightly on the screen, we'll set our value coming in like that. We'll say our offset is the value translation. How far it's moved on the screen will go into our offset right here. And then when the drag has ended, we'll do on ended. We don't care what comes in here. We'll just do with animation, offset equals dot zero is dragging equals false. We've looked at this previously in other videos and articles. So, it's not new, but it's a simple drag animation here. That's our drag gesture. Now we'll say our press gesture is a long press gesture. And when this thing ends, I'll get a value coming in. We'll say with animation is dragging is true. So when I have uh, successfully triggered a long press, go ahead and say I am now dragging. And what we do now is we combine them together. We say, let combined the gesture be our press gesture dot sequenced before the drag gesture. So we're saying uh, this press gesture here must come before the drag gesture. That's what we're saying. So they've got a long press fully and then the drag will be activated to watch for the movements. With that done, we can go ahead and make a uh, circle on the screen that we can drag around. We'll say, I want to send back a circle here. I think you do circle like that. Uh, dot fill dot red with a frame width of 64, height 64, a scale effect. And I'll say, if we are currently dragging, use 1.5, otherwise 1. So it'll kind of grow a little bit to symbolize it's being dragged on the screen with an offset of our offset and a gesture attached of our combined gesture like that. So it sends back that full gesture as you drag it around. So I'll press Command R now and see if this works correctly. So I'll press and hold. It triggers a drag like that and now I can drag it around. I let go, it's back down again. But I can't drag naturally, I can't just pull it like that and try and move it around. It will not work. The drag will not activate until I press and hold first up comes the circle, it's now active. I can now move it around and then release. Now gestures are a really great way to make fluid, interesting, engaging user interfaces, but please make sure 
you show users how they work. This would not be obvious unless you explain to them first. Just otherwise, if you don't do that, it's going to be confusing.